Hey everybody, we are now in the fourth section of chapter nine, which you know is in unit eight. Um, and we are going to be talking today about um, arcs and chords. These are two vocabulary words that you should already feel super comfortable with. Um, as you know, a chord is a line segment whose endpoints are on a circle. And the arc is sort of a piece of that circumference. So right here we have chord AB, that's just line segment AB. Um, and that has formed arc AB. And remember, we're gonna sort of focus on the minor arcs right now for, for what it's worth. Um, so chord AB has formed arc AB. You should be super comfortable with that. Um, all right, moving on. There are three main uh, theorems that we're gonna be talking about today and they kind of overlap, um, but we'll talk about the three individually and then um, we'll do a bunch of practice problems that um, have them all intertwining. So uh, theorem number one says, in the same circle or in congruent circles, if I have congruent arcs, those congruent arcs have congruent chords. So what that means is, let's say in this circle, I have arc AB, and in this circle, I have arc CD. And remember, these circles are congruent to each other, which means that the radii are congruent or are the same. So if I know that arc AB, and this is both the measurement of this arc or the length, it doesn't matter. If arc AB is congruent to arc CD, that means that the chord that created them, those two chords are congruent. So that means that AB, line segment AB, is congruent to line segment CD. Cool? Makes sense if you think about like a pizza and sort of like chopping a pizza um, in like squares as opposed to in sectors. Um, then you think about it like if you cut the pizza like this and then cut the pizza like this, the length of your cut and the length of that uh, crust piece, they're going to be the same. Um, okay, so that's theorem one. Theorem two says a diameter or a radius, and you're going to often see it as a radius that is perpendicular to a chord. So let's draw that first. So I'm gonna draw uh, my chord first. So here's a random chord. I'm gonna call it again, AB, super boring, but whatever. So there's my chord. And I'm gonna draw a radius that is perpendicular to that chord. So remember, there are an infinite number of radii in a circle. So I'm gonna draw one that is perpendicular to that chord. So that uh, perpendicular radius has just bisected my chord and has bisected the arc. Cool? So whenever I have a radius that is perpendicular to a chord, it bisects the chord, it bisects the arc. All right, so that's theorem two. Theorem three says this. So again, in the same circle or in congruent circles, if I have two chords that are the same distance, from the center of the circle, they're gonna be congruent to each other, which again, sort of makes sense. So I'm gonna draw my center here and I'm gonna draw one chord like AB and I'll draw another chord, again, super boring, CD. I'm gonna drop a tood to those chords because remember tood is like the distance or the height. So this guy and this guy, I'm approximating here. So if this distance is the same, then I know that AB is congruent to CD, which sort of makes sense, right? So if we are, again, cutting our pizza and I make a vertical slice that is the same distance from the center of my pizza, then I just created two cuts that are congruent to each other. Um, so uh, do you though remember in theorem two, what we learned about perpendicular radii to those, um, to those chords? We would know, remember that like AM is now congruent to MB and DN is congruent to CN. Um, so that's kind of how they start to squash together. So we're going to see all three of these theorems squash together in the next couple practice problems. Um, all right, so let's look at this one first. Lots of info here. Um, this is kind of a glorious problem because everything's in here. So um, looking at what you have here, 
what do you know arc AB is congruent to? So pause the video and uh, answer this. All right, let's come back. So if we look here, um, arc AB is made up of line segment AB. I know that line segment AB is 10 units long. Ah, line segment CD or chord CD is also 10 units long. So that means that AB is congruent to arc CD. Cool? Now let's look at number two. So pause the video now and try and answer number two. All right, we're back. We know that if we have OM, which is perpendicular to AB, that is going to be bisecting this guy. So I know that AM is going to equal five, and so is DN. DN is also going to equal five. All right, last one, um, line segment MO. So I need to figure out how long, or I'm sorry, I need to figure out what MO is congruent to. So pause the video, answer it, come back. All right, so hopefully you said that MO is also congruent to line segment ON. That is because chord AB and chord CD are congruent to each other. That means that they are equidistant from the center. So those like altitudes that we dropped are congruent to each other. So that's kind of all three of those uh, theorems in one problem, which is kind of fun. Um, all right, so let's scooch on. Next type of problem. So if you look here, ah, look what we've got. A nice little Pythagorean triple. So does anyone know what C is? It's 12, 5, 12, 13. Whoop, whoop. And then you know that D also has to be 12 because we've got a perpendicular radius right here that is going to be bisecting this chord. Awesome. All right, next prob. Um, all right, so if we look at this one, why don't you pause the video and try and do these on your own? All right, we are back. So if I look at this, I see a nice little right triangle. Ooh, it's a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. That's kind of fun. So if I put in my 30 right here, we are throwing it back. I've got 30, 60, 90. So if this is six, remember my side lengths are X, 2X, and X root three. So if uh, my 2X side is six, that means the side opposite 30 has to be half that. So Y is going to be three, X is going to be three root three. And then what about the measurement of arc AB? So that's from here all the way here. Well, my friends, if you look at this central angle, see how the central angle hits right here? We know that the measurement of this arc is 60. And lo and behold, anything that is perpendicular to a chord and the arc, it bisects that chord and it bisects the arc. So both of these are going to be 60. That means this guy is 120 degrees. Hopefully you got that right. All right, on to the next one. So um, this is a little tricky. So with these kinds of problems, there are two that um, we're going to wrap this up uh, this up with. So always with these problems, you want to draw a radius that is helpful. So remember, you can always draw an infinite number of radii in any circle. So you want to draw a radius that is helpful for you. So let's sketch a circle. I'm going to um, cheat a little bit and use the uh, circle tool. I mean, just kidding. I did it by hand. Um, okay, so I'm going to sketch a circle with an eight centimeter long cord that is three centimeters from the center. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a cord. So this guy is eight centimeters long. That's how long my cord is. And I know it is three centimeters from my center. So here's my center. And that distance, so remember, that's always going to be the altitude, that is three centimeters. Now, I want to know what the radius of the circle is. And remember, you're going to want to draw a radius that is helpful to you. So I could draw a radius here, but that's not helpful. All right. Well, I could draw a radius here, but that's not helpful. So, hmm, is there some way that I can draw a radius that is helpful? Yes, you can draw a radius like this. And then look what you've just created a nice little right triangle. But you're sitting there and you're like, a 3, 8, R, what? Don't forget that theorem. This 
uh, um, perpendicular line bisects this guy. So I technically here have a three, four, five triangle. So my radius is five centimeters long. Cool. All right, last one. So again, uh, we have to sketch our own circle. So I'm going to use um, the shape tool. I mean, I'm going to use the pen and eyeball it. Perfect. Okay, so um, I have, um, I want to find the measure of the arc cut off by a chord. Okay, so again, I'm going to draw a chord here. So here's my chord, and your chord can be anywhere, right? So your chord could be like vertical, perfectly horizontal, whatever. Your chord can be anywhere. I just sort of get into the habit of making it like a little sassy hat kind of coming off the side. Um, okay, so my chord is 16 inches long, and um, my radius is 15. So again, I want to draw a radius that is useful. So I could draw a radius like that. Well, maybe that's good because it can be a bisector, but let's not do that right now. So, okay, I know no matter what, I can do this guy. And here's my radius of 15 inches. Um, and then, hmm, yeah, I could draw another one like this, and that's 15 inches. But the question's saying I want to find the measure of this arc. So I want to find the measure of this arc, which means we're looking for the central angle. And this is tricky. So we know this is an isosceles triangle, this big triangle right here. I know it's isosceles, but there's really no way for me to figure out exactly what that degree measurement is. You could do law of sines, law of cosines, ay -ay -ay, or you drop a tude. And now look what you have. You have a nice little right triangle here. This guy is 15 and this guy is eight. And I'm gonna call this, um, I don't know, Y. So here's my angle Y. I can use trig to figure out what that angle Y is. So I've got the side opposite and the side hypotenuse. So I can say the inverse sine of that angle. I'm sorry, the inverse sine. Set it up. So the sine of angle Y is going to be equal to 8 over 15. So the inverse sine, apologies for before, of 8 divided by 15 is going to give me what that degree measurement is. And then what do you think you need to do in order to figure out what this whole thing is? You double it. Cool. This is the hardest type of problem that you're going to see in this section. Um, so don't fret if you're like, what's going on? Don't worry. We will go over it together. You're going to crush this. Good luck. Have fun.